Which of these models in Cursor AI is best for five coders? And I'm gonna answer that today. Welcome back on today's video. I'm gonna go over the best model to choose if you're a little bit more inexperienced or you just kind of want a model that's gonna give you code correct every single time with limited errors. As if you're more experienced with software development, I'm gonna go over some methods when it comes to granularizing the way you approach different logic specific to your application. But for now, let me just answer that question right off the bat of which is the best model if you're a vibe coder and you can already see it selected. It's gonna be GBT5 Codex High. This model is probably one of the most powerful models I've seen in coding in a while. And this model takes very long to do task, but effectively the code that comes out of that task is very good. Now, let me show you how to enable this. First off, go up to your settings. You're going to want to come to your models tab. And then if you don't see it, simply search it here. But as you can see, it's enabled, Boolean on, good to go. So I'm not going to make you wait five minutes to give you the answer. It's GBT5 Codex High. And I'll explain the nuance now. If you're a little bit more experienced in developing, which model you should choose for what. If you're completely inexperienced or have little to no knowledge on coding, opt for this. Now, if you're a little bit more experienced and you kind of understand the implications of what you're requesting in a code job, this is where choosing different models comes into play. So what do I mean by this? If I'm gonna do something extremely simple, for example, I look at my header here and I'm like, you know what? I need to change the color of scroll stopping. Or you know what? I need to change the copy here. So it doesn't say design stop scroll stopping thumbnails in seconds. It says thumbnails are amazing. I would just opt for auto, to be honest with you. We just need it done fast. Give me the code, easy. This is low level logic. When do we opt for something higher? like GBT5 Codex. This is when we do logic that is going to take the agent 30 to 40 minutes to even produce the value. So an example of that for my platform, which I knew when putting in the task for it, that's gonna require a higher level of reasoning was its ability to handle this workspaces feature I'm currently developing. Idea being that each individual that signs up for this platform is gonna have its own associated workspace. But on top of that, with the associated workspace, there are going to be relevant seats remaining. So if I come down here to pricing, what you'll notice is that we have our nice little tiers, it's amazing, but each tier has a relevant amount of seats such as each seat is $24 a month if you are on the monthly plan. Therefore, to add another increment, another seat, be $48 a month. I knew this logic is going to be way more complex than just simply changing the color or the copy of a landing page. Therefore, when I approach this kind of logic, you want to approach it in ask mode, GPT-5 codex high. You want to talk back and forth to really find the roadmap that is most optimized for your specific software. Ask mode is extremely powerful when using a high level reasoning model like GPT-5 Codex High due to the fact that you are able to ask very specific questions that are specific to your underlying software's front end, back end, and long-term architecture so that when you connect this to a real back end or you have a software that functionally has users, you're not shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to poorly designed architecture. That all sounds super ambiguous, I know. So you gotta watch another series on this channel. I am making hour long episodes here, y'all. It's in the description down below. It's about Google AI vibe coding. I show you how to vibe code a real software from a real engineer's perspective, step by step. So if you're more skilled, you want to granularize the way you use these agents. So typically, if I want something done that is more mid-level of complexity, maybe not high level complexity, I'm opting between Sonnet 4.5 and GBT5 Codex. I use these interchangeably. Personally, if I'm working on a job with GBT5 Codex, I notice it's taking longer than it should, or I'm noticing it's hitting Roblox it shouldn't, then I will put in the exact same prompt or alternatively say, continue the job from this model and give it to Sonnet 4.5 to give a different perspective. What's occurring here, which is really cool, is that if you were running a real software company with a real software team with real humans, I know it's kind of crazy. Essentially what we're asking here is a different perspective which is very important in coding. One thing you need to understand about developing software is that when you find the end value of a product, so for example, mine is editing thumbnails, the way we approach editing thumbnails through AI. There is multiple ways I could have gone about the pipeline to upload the thumbnail data, to analyze the thumbnail data, to then edit the thumbnail data. When I say thumbnail data, let me make this like make a little bit more sense. E.g., you know, log in, continue, you know, I drag in just a starter thumbnail here, put in a prompt like, make me hold a burger in both hands. It's amazing. This logic, editing the thumbnail, cancel generation, uh, this being sent to a Gemini API endpoint, all this, there is multiple ways to approach it. Nice burger. What I'm telling you is that you want to get perspective from all these different AI models on the ways to approach it because it's like asking your team for a different perspective where you have a nice little whiteboard and you're drawing out different types of architecture. A specific type of architecture that is very important for you to understand 
is data pass. I'm not gonna bore y'all, but what I mean by data pass is that when a real user signs up for a software, we will use their login information. We'll use their email, and then typically we will create a thing called a UID. What a UID is, is a random string. What a random string is, is just a random list of characters, just numbers and the alphabet. This UID will associate to that underlying user. So then create what we call a data path. These data paths are gonna have relevant information specific to that user. So when we reflect their information on the front end, we know who we're reflecting it to. We know that this creator at thumio.ai, this individual has created this project because we stored it on the correct data path. I bring this up and I dive into it way more into that series is that this is extremely important for you to understand when diving in between different models and when creating more complex logic. So TLDR of what to choose for what. I would choose GPT-5 Codex High for planning and executing extremely complex tasks. I would choose Auto for very, very, very simple tasks that you know you could do yourself basically in five minutes, but why do it and just have AI do it? I would choose 4.5 in Codex for mid-level of complexity of task. What's an example of mid-level, Corbin? You know, it's really dependent. Uh, you know, one, one example here could be, you know, look at this sidebar here. How do we make the UI and the sidebar better? Do some planning and then let it execute. Uh, it's really specific on your platform. But what I can tell you as the end idea of this video is that if you're extremely inexperienced, brand new to coding, you don't even want to look at the files. You just want to be in agent mode, not editor mode. Use GPT-5 Codex High. Is it overkill? Yes, it very much is overkill. But will it give you correct code every single time? Eh, I would say 90% of the time. That extra 10% where you may lose the code or the code might not be good, but you keep iterating, but you keep building, you'll realize in like three weeks, oh, that actually wasn't good code and you'll adjust. So as you already know, these style videos, I'll see you in the next. These AI models are getting so good that I guarantee you by the end of 2026, anyone's gonna be able to code anything in the entire world because of the fact that these models are gonna be so good that they're gonna be able to self-correct and find all that little nuance that it doesn't even matter anymore type of video. Nice burger.